Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. In a recent video, I was trying to make a Dogecoin using uh, plaster investment casting, and I had a lot of fails, and I'm going to revisit that in the future, but I wanted to try another casting technique called ceramic shell casting. So let's see how this goes. These are vents, and the larger ones are to help support it while I'm building up the ceramic shell. I use some just straight PLA filament for some smaller vents. I want plenty of vents to make sure that the mold completely fills when it's poured. This is a product called Suspenda Slurry, and I will leave a link in the description where I got it. It is a ceramic material that will coat my mold, and then later I will burn the mold out and fire it into actual ceramic that I will then pour the molten metal into. And here you can see the setup. I've got a pour funnel, the sprue, and then the mold will fill from the bottom up with plenty of vents. I let this first coat drip for a while, and then I put the top back on the bucket and let it dry. You can see as it dries, it turns orange, and now we're ready for the next coat. I got a real good coat on the second layer, but then I decided that dipping it all the way in like this where I'm covering up the funnel was probably a mistake. So I cleaned it off because I don't want to build up a shell covering up my funnel and then having things end up falling into the mold cavity. The second coat and all subsequent coats will get a coating with silica sand. This is my fine grade, which is 50 to 100 mesh. That means the particle sizes are between 0.15 and 0.3 millimeters. You just want to coat all surfaces and then we'll let that dry. And again the orange color after it's dried for several hours. This is dip number three. And now I use a coarser silica sand. This is 30-50 mesh so that's between 0.3 and 0.6 millimeters particle size. And we continue this process building up layers. I actually lost count and did one extra layer. This is the final layer. I used the pattern to kind of agitate the slurry so that it's well mixed and then very carefully go around the cone and make sure I've got the whole thing coated. This last layer I don't use any sand on. All right, here it is. See, it's built up quite a shell. Um, I'm happy with that, it's pretty heavy. What they want me to do is fire it to 1650 Fahrenheit for four hours, I think is what they said. I have to double check that. I've noticed people doing this and they're, they're getting cracks when they fire, and that's because the plastic inside heats up and expands. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it, actually I'm gonna put it in this pan, upside down, kind of like that. I'm gonna heat it up very slowly so the plastic gets softer and softer and softer. I, I wanna, if I can, prevent it from cracking. Once that plastic is at like 400 degrees, it's gonna be liquid and we'll start running out, and then at that point I ought to be able to go up uh, in temperature much faster. So I slowly brought it up to 400 Fahrenheit over four hours, then I increased it to the 1650 over another four hours, held it there for an hour, and now it's cooled off. So I'm really happy with how that looks. I don't see any cracks, and uh, yeah, it's ceramic. See all the vents up here? They look good. What I'm gonna do is blow this out with some compressed air. I just wanna get all the loose stuff out so when I'm pouring, uh, it doesn't get sucked down into the, into the mold. Not much. All right, so I just packed it in sand. Um, this is actually a flower pot, something that can take some heat. And I'm gonna preheat it to 800 degrees. So I'm going to make bronze for this coin. This is all old copper piping with solder still on it. This is the stuff that I cut off before I made my cannon. Bronze is of course a mixture of copper and tin. Solder is mostly tin and I'm going to add additional tin to it to make about a 10 or 11 percent tin bronze.
You see what I see? Perfect text. Wow. So this is definitely more what I had in mind. It's not perfect. You can actually see, you can see a roughness in this area here, but that's from the 3D printer. That is not the, um, the molding process. Now some of the text is like this, the bottom of the eye is missing. Uh, there's a hint of it there, but, but not much. Uh, the S is a little messed up, but totally legible. Nothing that stands out. It really, really looks very good. The other side I sanded it all to get that uh, the metal came in right there. Five hundred and ten grams. One pound two ounces. Now what am I gonna do with this coin? I don't know. Maybe we need to contact Elon Musk and see if he wants to send it to the moon. <laughs> I mean, he's talking about sending a, a physical Dogecoin to the moon. Why not one made out of scrap? You know, doesn't that, doesn't that just fit? <laughs> Come on, Elon, give me a call. <laughs> now, this one weighs 500 and some grams. I could make you a smaller one out of gold. So, been doing some measuring, and when I compare the diameter of my pattern, 4.254. Now, when I take this, it ranges from 4.2 to 4.21, and that difference is about 50 thousandths. And I can show this to you. I'm gonna line these up exactly. So I have them flush on this side, and I'll hold that tight. And I don't know if you can see, but I am now sticking out over here, even though I am flush over here. And that is basically this metal shrinking as it goes from this size, which is what I poured it into when it was molten, and then when it becomes solid, it's 50,000 smaller. Uh, now, when I measure the same thing on the depth, I got 0.324, and this one I got between 0.327 and 0.328. So there's about three and a half thousandths difference there. And when I do the math on both of those, uh, they came out to basically the same thing. There's 1.2% shrinkage from the pattern to the finished product. That's very useful for me to know because if I wanted to make a Dogecoin that was exactly this size, all I need to do is scale up my pattern 1.2%, do the same process, and then when it shrinks, it would be this big rather than this big. Now, this being a Dogecoin, that's no big deal. If I'm doing a gear or something that really does need some precision, then I need to scale up my pattern, but that's very easy to do. This was my first time doing ceramic shell casting. Um, thoughts on the process. Uh, it actually, 
It's not hard, it just takes a long time. It, it took a lot longer than I was expecting. There's like seven different coats you have to do. So you have to dip it, you have to let it dry, then dip it again, dip it in sand, let it dry. And it takes days to build up this pattern because it, you know, it takes hours for it to dry depending on the, the temperature and everything. That said, there wasn't a lot of skill involved and I pretty much got exactly what I was, was looking for here. There's a couple tiny little defects in here, but I think most of the things on this that aren't perfect are because the 3D print wasn't perfect. So I am very pleased with it, and I think this is going to be really useful as a metalworking technique in the future. Uh, when I need to make something that's difficult to machine, uh, maybe even impossible to machine, well, I can, I can design it, 3D print it, and then just cast it. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I am going to revisit the plaster investment molding in the next video, uh, because I want to do some more experimentation with that. I really appreciate your guys' comments, you made some really good ideas, and um, I want to push that and see kind of what the limits of that technique are. See you on the next one.